the Imperial Valleys, AM 1230 KXO, El Centro, California. Coming up, uh, we're going to check in with the CBS radio network. Following that, we will visit with the uh, director of the Imperial County Health Department, and we'll get an update on the COVID-19 situation in our valley. CBS News update. Death rates rising in states where the coronavirus has hit hard. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy reporting 233 new fatalities, but some hopeful signs. You're starting to see some glimmers of hope. Look at the amount of people discharged yesterday. Look at the f beginnings of the flattening of that curve of positive tests. More than 2 million people have been virus tested in the U.S. CBS's Dr. David Agus says more widespread testing is needed. We need to do social tracing. That is, we need the ability, if you do test positive, to go back and say, who did you interact with over the past few days? Because those people need to be kept at home. In this pandemic, pollster Jennifer DePinto says 63% are stressed about finances. 34% say they're more concerned about affording their day-to-day -day household bills. 32% about affording groceries. And similar percentages are concerned about paying for medical care or their rent. CBS News update. I'm Steve. And we are the Imperial Valley's AM 1230 KXOL Centro, California. And with us on the phone today, it's the director of the Imperial County Health Department, Jeanette Angulo. And uh, we've got some questions uh, for Jeanette, and uh, she's got some answers. Good morning, Jeanette. Good morning, Carol. And I'd offer you a cup of coffee, but I understand Tony Rahotis has already warned you about my coffee. <laughs> it sure has. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we have some questions, and uh, they have obviously to do with the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus that uh, has been declared a pandemic. And uh, a couple of questions uh, to begin with. What is the status right now? Carol, right now in Imperial County, um, let me start off with the testing. We've tested over 660 individuals in our county, and of these tests, um, 87 have come back negative, 87%. Um, uh, of the 667 tests, uh, 79 were positive. Um, something I want to highlight is that 25 of those 79 have already recovered, and that's really good news. Okay, and uh, that was one of my questions. How do you determine they have recovered? We have an epidemiology team that follows up with the positive cases. They work closely with the um, individual, with the healthcare providers. Um, they stay at home, they have isolation orders, and so our epidemiology is in constant, uh, constant contact with the individuals. Okay, who is doing the testing? In Imperial County, for sure, the local hospitals, um, Pioneers Memorial Hospital and El Centro Regional Medical Center, and we also have a few providers that are um, collecting specimen and sending it to uh, mostly commercial labs. Okay. And uh, now, one of the things I, I do understand, not everybody needs to be tested. That is correct, Carol. Um, not everybody needs to be tested. If you're not within the high-risk categories, you don't have underlying conditions, you don't have symptoms, um, you don't need to be tested. Okay. I, um, a order was issued by the uh, county health officer, Dr. Stefan Monday, that... Uh, Anybody that goes out in public should be wearing a, um, a mask. And uh, uh, that takes effect at midnight tonight, right? That takes effect, yes. 11.59 p.m. tonight. It's a face covering. Um, and it's to protect, you know, our citizens and try to prevent the transmission of COVID. Um, the face coverings are encouraged to be used when um, individuals are going to be in contact with other members of the public. No need to wear them at home. If you're alone, no need to wear them. Um, also for essential employees, um, employees who um, are working, providing a service to the public and or are unable to maintain a minimum of six feet of separation from coworkers or others. 
Okay. And uh, now, that is an order from the uh, county health officer. If you do not comply, you can be cited, right? That is what is in the order. You are correct. Okay. And uh, it could be a $1,000 fine and up to 90 days in jail for each violation. So um, it carries some weight. And I don't think, I don't think we're going to see, you know, police officers going way out of their way to cite people. But uh, that does point out we're serious about this. That is correct, Carol. And our CEO um, is here with me, so. Hey, good, mo hey, good morning, Carol. Good that's, morning, Tony. That's a great point. And what we want this is we, we just want people to comply. At the end of the day, we, we need people to listen and take this serious. Um, if the... Uh, our county health officer feels that this is a good idea. We need to follow his lead and, and implement this. Uh, again, we, it's all about flattening the curve. Um, we don't want our surge to go past any of our expectations. We want to be able to mitigate this, and this is a good tool to do so. I, I'm sure our local law enforcement will be, uh, you know, do their their due diligence, but I think it's, it's more of a just it's a, the learning tool and it trying to get as much messaging out today, you'll see a great deal of it because we, we're using this as a, a learning tool and not so much as a hammer. I would assume there will be more uh, peer shaming than law enforcement involved. Correct, correct. And you know what? I want to highlight something, Carol. Um, we all play a very important role in this from the person that stays at home to that essential um, employee. Um, those who are staying at home, you know, abiding by what is being told, recommended or required, you know, by staying at home, you're helping to prevent and slow the spread in our community. That's, that's huge, that's really important. But then let's talk about our essential workers, our agency who continue to function in the midst of all of this. We need to keep them safe and healthy from our healthcare personnel you know, to those individuals at clinics, hospitals, um, to those who provide, you know, the daily basics, the food providers, those that make sure that our, you know, water, we have water, electricity, you know, those service providers. So, um, yes, these measures are intended to reinforce the message. You know, this is, this is serious. This is in our community. COVID-19, you know, that's reality today. Um, and, and we all play a very important role and, you know, it's just, um, reaffirming that it's serious, whether there's an order or not, this is serious and we all have to do our part. Okay. Now talking about the face coverings, um, you do not need a medical grade mask. That is correct, and we are not encouraging that because our healthcare providers need those. They are the frontline workers in the healthcare settings, and as is, there's a shortage already. So, no, no, let me tell you a little bit about that. Um, so, face coverings. You know, you can do face coverings with materials that you have at home, a T-shirt, um, you know, um, scarves. Um, don't use those that are porous. It's, it's more those that are more solid kind of materials. You can do uh, bandanas, net gaiters. Um, there's actually some great um, information out there and some websites that show you how to do face coverings. And some of them you don't even have to sew. So there's many ideas out there. Um, so the recommendation is that, you know, you look around your household. If you have bandanas, use bandanas, net gaiters. Um, if you want to get creative, don't have much to do at home, you know, start getting some old clothes out and start creating um, face coverings with your children. That may be an activity that you can do with your children or with others in your household. Okay, and that's exactly what my wife has been doing. Uh, went through some old T-shirts and has uh, made a number of uh, face masks, went online, got a pattern, and uh, is making them. Yes, I do want to say something about um, face coverings. Um, the face coverings are not recommended for children younger than two years of age. So um, not only that, 
but for individuals that have trouble breathing, um, you know, or have some sort of uh, medical condition, just making sure that you assess before you put on a face covering. Okay. A couple of other questions for you. Uh, I think, if I recall correctly, there are approximately 300 hospital beds available in Imperial County with uh, perhaps, what, 50 ICU beds. Is that enough? Um, there's about, you're right, closer to 300, 268 or so beds uh, between both hospitals. Um, you know, as far as capacity, there is the ability um, to increase bed capacity as the situation um, evolves. Okay. And uh, um, the question everybody is asking, and I understand there's no real answer, when will this end? <laughs> when will this end? Um, I don't have an answer for you, but I know what we can do now. Um, like our CEO said, to help flatten that curb. Um, you know, at this point in time, we all need to assume that we've already been exposed to COVID and we need to take the necessary me uh, measures to protect ourselves and others. Um, if you're not an essential employee, um, please stay home. If you need to go out, you know, pick up some of the essentials, do so, but practice social and physical distancing. Um, when you can, you know, every time you can, wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Um, avoid being around sick people. And I know earlier in the week the recommendation was given, now it's a requirement, um, 1159 tonight, uh, to wear a face covering. Wear a face covering when you leave your household and are around other people. And just avoid overall being around sick people. If you visit the uh, KXO Facebook page, we have uh, pictures of all of our personnel wearing various and sundry types of face coverings. And uh, you know, that may give you a hint or an idea as to what would work for you. Yes, that's great. Now, one other thing I do want to say is, you know, um, stay informed. And we, we are so grateful for, you know, having the different kinds of media uh, providers, you know, they've been sending such a great message. They've been supportive um, all along. But I do want to say, you know, we need to stay away from rumors and incorrect information. A lot of that is circulating in our community throughout the United States. I mean, it's not just here in Imperial County. Uh, but, um, you know, when we seek information, seek information from trusted sites. You know, there's uh, sites such as, you know, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They have great information um, at the state level, California Department of Public Health. And here locally, the Imperial County Public Health Department's website at www.icphd.org, you will find all types of information, um, including how to make face coverings. So if you haven't done so, I encourage you to visit our website. There is information for the general public, for businesses, for, um, you know, just all, all types of uh, agencies and, and individuals. Um, there's resources about mental health, um, social services, just an array of information. Okay. Uh trust uh, you know trust no one on the internet in effect um you know one of the things that popped up was uh if you go to the grocery store leave your groceries outside your front door for two days before you bring them in and another one uh, hey when you bring your groceries in the house wash everything with soap and water um uh, common sense would prevail i would think so, so that's the kind of information that we really, really need to look out for. And, you know, um, visit, visit, like I said, trusted um, websites. If in doubt, just do a quick search um, and, and find out if that's actually true or not. Yes. Okay. Anything that we missed? I think we pretty much covered it, Carol. Thank you so so much for allowing us to, you know, uh, provide a message to our community. Well, as we've said here at KXO, it's we're not for you; we are with you during this uh, this crisis. So, uh, 
you know, we're just trying to do our part and get some straight information out. Yes, thank you. And United, I think we will get very far. Okay. We need to stay strong. We need to stay healthy. Um, you know, um, Chief Rahotis, any last-minute message? Carol, I'm, gl I I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one that still calls him Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, I, I, I've said this over and over again. It's going to take a united front to get through this. It's not a county. It's not the cities. It's you and the partnership we have with you. It's the partnership we have our, with our employees, our citizens, the community as a whole. We will be Imperial County strong, and we will get through this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Tony Rahodis, the CEO of Imperial County, and uh, Jeanette Angulo, Director of the Imperial County Health Department. And uh, that's our latest update on the COVID-19 situation.